What is up, people? I'm IGP, and welcome back to Subnautica. Now, today's video is going to steer away from our current playthrough, so if you were expecting the next episode, that will be here shortly. This video today, we're going to be focusing on the DLC, the Subnautica expansion pack, if you will. Now, while all the other Subnautica YouTubers have touched on this topic already, and the information is all available collectively, you guys would not leave me alone about it. I have gathered everything that I could find and put it all in one video for you guys to digest and enjoy. Now, the information I'm gathering, to my knowledge, is concrete, but with the amounts of information that has been floating around about this, some of this may not be directly from the devs. I don't want to come out and say everything I've found is, just in case it isn't. Now, if you guys don't want to be spoiled on this, please click away. Now, feel free to check out the description below. I'll have a link that goes straight to the playlist of my current Let's Play. Anyway, check that out. You've been warned. Let's continue. So, the expansion pack. The Arctic Biome. A biome that is arctic as hell the arctic biome has been something that has been talked about for a very long time it is only recently and towards the end of development did they even come out and say that the arctic biome could potentially be part of an expansion pack for subnautica in fact there are going to be aspects including fauna that have been around forever that are going to be included or have been talked about being included in fact this map in particular which again, I can't verify, I can't tell you how many maps I came across when I was looking through the wiki. Half of them, if not more, are made by the users. So again, take this lightly, but as you can see here, this is a map obviously of a older version of the layout, but you can see in the top left, the top middle and the bottom right, there are Arctic areas. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about the biome itself. So on the wiki, there are two different pages relating to the DLC. One is specifically the Arctic Biome. It says the Arctic Biome is a future biome. It will be added in a separate game mode. In fact, most of the content, if not all of it, is going to be completely different and separate from the current story and protagonist. Now, the Arctic landmass can be seen in the ending scene of Subnautica as the Neptune escape rocket orbits planet 4546B. Now, if you guys do remember, our protagonist, the character we're playing as, actually turns his head towards the Arctic landmass. Now look at this thing, it is huge. It is absolutely huge. And to be honest, seeing something like that really makes you feel more inclined to explore. It almost makes you kind of question your choice on leaving. Now it says no concept art of the Arctic biome exists, but it can be assumed that it would consist of a large ice cap which can be explored both above and below. Now, obviously, to some degree, you could say that 4546B is Earth-like. Having ice caps wouldn't be impossible. It's just that we've been introduced to this planet in a very strange way. We know that the area that we're playing on is a two kilometer by two kilometer volcanic crater that reaches up from the deepest part of the entire world. Majority of the world is underwater. However, in addition to seeing the Arctic landmass, before you see it, you can actually see other islands, other things, other areas of the planet that we haven't even seen before. As far as we understood and what our PDA told us, the dead zone is essentially the rest of the planet, that we were just lucky enough to crash on top of this crater and see other types of life besides microscopic and giant ass ghost leviathans. And who knows what else we'd see out there. Now on this page, you're also gonna see the reference sheet, as I'd call it, for the Arctic biosphere. This is basically a collection of real life shots of Arctic areas and wildlife for reference to be able to emulate this kind of environment in game. It says down here, creatures should be reminiscent of and allude to known Arctic wildlife. Now this information, this sheet itself, is obviously something that's sent between devs for reference, as I mentioned, and it's always subject to change. Now on the Arctic Biome page on the wiki, it says that you could be above and below. However, on this sheet, it says, also can use floating ice shelves as a natural ceiling to prevent player from going above surface in Arctic biosphere. Now there's also another contradictory to this information that's listed here that would suggest that we are going to be able 
to be on top of the landmass as well. But we'll get to that in just a second. Now here's the expansion pack page. It says the expansion pack is an upcoming feature for Subnautica. The release date is currently unknown. Currently, all that is known is that the Arctic biome will be a large part of the game, possibly the entire map. It is also known that a weather system will be featured. Now this is interesting because weather is something that we've all been kind of waiting for. It almost makes sense that there should be weather. I'm not sure if this update will reflect whether in only the expansion and not in the main game or it will just be added to the game overall and the expansion will include that now based on a tweet from game director charlie cleveland it is likely that the arctic expansion will be a separate game mode as he has stated that the protagonist will be a currently unnamed female character rather than riley robinson uh which apparently is our character i think ah yes it actually is the main character i didn't know the name until now look at that so here's the female protagonist this is the artwork which is actually kind of old i believe for the female model this currently unnamed character will serve as the protagonist in the upcoming expansion pack of subnautica rather than the default games riley robinson so this was actually made the character was made uh with the idea of having an option to change your gender now as far as the story goes there are a lot of theories as always there's a lot of theories some are insisting that the female protagonist launched her escape pod way earlier than anyone else did on the aurora as it was crashing down to the planet now as fast as the aurora was traveling in the cinematic trailer and i'm not sure that that is accurate obviously it's done for cinematic effect but based on that you know this character would have had to have ejected insanely early like before even getting shot i imagine so obviously there's some potential holes in that idea or theory i don't think anything like that has been confirmed by the devs yet if it has if by the time you see this video if there's any new information of course let us know in the comments we're all up for getting some more information on this now this is the model on sketchfab or the models technically for the female character this is actually made quite some time ago the model's all there and just tr it's just a matter of transferring over for the most part animations and such and then doing voice acting interesting stuff oh hey look what what are we seeing a reflection of what is that oh hey there's a beach look at that holy crap i can see a lot what other secrets are you trying to tell me here that is actually kind of insane to be able to see that anyway sorry about that so let's talk a little bit about the fauna of the arctic biome you all remember the rock puncher right this awesome fully developed creature was set to be implemented into the game a very long time ago in fact some of the original concept art included the rock puncher and that's this thing right here this beautiful beautiful piece of artwork look at that thing so the objective of the rock puncher was to do just as it's named it would punch the terrain surrounding it from the looks of this concept art it seems like the rock puncher would have originally been wandering around the bottom of the kelp forest carving the terrain out because if you guys remember terraforming used to be a thing that was in subnautica until it became just impossible to work with with the way the water was working and the way that everything needed to work terraforming was just removed it was fun while we could use it in fact you still can and and play around with it if you want to get your fix of terraforming so the rock puncher essentially was supposed to do that automatically would just walk around and carve into the terrain surrounding it but since they removed the terraforming the rock puncher seemed pretty much useless which sucks because this guy looks awesome super cute he looks like a freaking shrimp implementation was uncertain due to the removal of terraforming as I stated, which was a major aspect of the Rock Puncher's behavior. It seems now it may be implemented in the upcoming expansion pack, though what purpose it will serve is not known. And under the video sections here, we can actually see some awesome animations, like him walking. Look at that thing. That's actually kind of creepy. And in this one, we can see it attacking or doing something, maybe pushing the player away. And it jumps. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, so I've actually never seen this video before. <laughs> That was hilarious. Now, it actually doesn't say whether it would be hostile to the player or not. It just seems like it's going to mind its own business, jump around and punch rocks, dude. Now, here is a video that is of quite low quality. I do apologize. This was actually given to me by Akatwinbis because these videos were originally on YouTube or on... They were still on YouTube, I think. I just don't have the links directing me to them. That was originally on the Trello, I think, is where people found them. But this is a video of the Rock Puncher in what appears to be an Arctic biome alongside penguins. 
The video is just really to test, I'm assuming, or show off the rock puncher in the biome itself. Obviously, the biome is not complete. This is very much early stages. Please do not think that this is how it's going to look or be deterred. This is just a testing video. Now, as far as the rock puncher's purpose, I can definitely see this working out in, in terms of it punching the ice. Instead of it being a rock puncher, it'll be an ice puncher. You can even give it a blue hue and it would fit right into this. It could even be underneath the surface and be carving out areas for other wildlife or maybe themselves to live in the ice. Then again, you would have to implement terraforming, but I feel like it might be a little bit more easy if it's just ice and not a huge complication of bio mix-ups. Possibility, I don't know. So that is the rock puncher. A lot of you guys probably already knew a lot about the rock puncher itself, but I understand a lot of the information you get, especially on YouTube nowadays with Subnautica, is to be taken with many grains of the finest salt. But if you guys want more confirmation about the rock puncher, here is on the Trello, the rock puncher animations done. Everything, all of its animations are completely done, including its death. Why anyone would want to kill this beautiful creature is beyond me. So the next fauna that is talked about a lot is the whale fauna. Here is a concept art, which I'm, I do apologize, is the highest resolution I could find for this particular one. This one is called the whale, just a whale, but everyone's calling it the glow whale. Here's another version of it. This one has horns. It kind of almost looks like the rabbit ray, just a giant rabbit ray. Now I know what you're thinking, IGP, this looks awesome, but what would it look like in game? This is a video of the glow whale or glow whales. And in fact, right below the video, you can see where it says in the assets files, glow whale is the name. So that could be considered official. Now you can hear reef backs in the distance. And in fact, at some point I heard those creepy horn sounds. Do you remember those horn sounds from the earlier versions? It was absolutely terrifying to hear that. Now, I don't know if that was a tease back in the day, like, hey, we're going to put this thing in game one day. You just wait. And this is the product of that, or they're just using it as a placeholder sound effect for the whale. We can also hear reef backs, even though there aren't any reef backs in sight, they're probably using different sounds to just kind of give off the feeling of a whale being there. Now, obviously, the the graphics, the model itself is not done. In fact, I firmly believe that's a placeholder as well. It is literally the exact shape of a whale that we can see on Earth. So they would probably change that up a bit, if not with the horns in some other way. Everything is still in the works, but this is awesome to see new creatures being tested out even. We have the reefbacks as the big, you know, friendly creatures in the main game. In the side game, now we have the glow whales. These guys are freaking huge. So that is the glow whale. That's pretty much all the information that I could find. So now here's something I'm going to touch on regarding fauna and other descriptions of the biome, but I'm going to touch on it lightly because from what I can gather, uh, this information could potentially have been fan made and not been originally from the devs. This is a screenshot of the Google documents posted by someone else prior to the Google doc being deleted or removed. Now, I actually saw this document a long time ago. This was years, I believe, at this point. In fact, it says it was created on March the 2nd of 2015. Again, referencing this map, we can assume that there were plans to have it in the main game. Now, the document is still accessible. However, all the information on it has been deleted and you cannot view the previous versions that had all the original information. And I tried to find it because at the time that I wanted to talk about it, the document was gone. Other YouTubers have talked about the document itself. So if you want to check them out, just do a search. I'm sure you'll find a bunch. But anyway, this is what I'm able to obtain. And this talks about the fauna that could potentially be in the Arctic biome, the mantle worm, which has been something everyone's been talking about as well, which is not a confirmed thing at all. But it says it's a huge bioform that lives in the ocean floor. Again, this sounds like something fan made, right? This sounds like a fan idea because good Lord, go to any comment section or any forum post about like ideas and theories and people just go nuts. Uh, there was a lot of information in this document talking about how it was going to work uh, how you were supposed to navigate, how it would play out. But again, this was created three years ago. Things are going to be so much more different now. But anyway, as other people have said, I have this strong feeling that this was just fan made, but it could have been because if my memory serves me correct, I remember finding this on the Trello posted by a dev. Could have potentially been like, hey, here's some cool ideas in here. Maybe we can use them. 
but we'll never know or I'll never know. So as far as fauna goes, the only other thing that I can think to show you guys is this other video of uh, of a bunch of penguins as we've seen before in the rock puncher video just roaming around without animation on the arctic biome. Now, I'm just going to assume that uh, there aren't going to be penguins in the game. I'm sure many of you share my skepticism. So that is it for fauna. Let's talk about vehicles because vehicles are interesting, right? Let's let's debunk this right now. Everyone is asking for the god dang Atlas submarine, which has been stated by the developers themselves that they would not be using it in game. No Atlas. However, however, there is a hovercraft. On the Subnautica Changes Twitter feed, on the 22nd of February, they said added hovercraft prototype for all to try. Now, don't get misinformed. That specific build in Experimental 59913 is available. We're already past that. However, when it says for all to try, they mean all the devs to try. We cannot access the hovercraft just yet. Now, the hovercraft doesn't have any concept art, doesn't have any details listed on the wiki, nothing. The hovercraft will be just as it's described, as it's named, a craft that hovers, likely to be on top of the ice. As we've seen in some of the videos and the descriptions, there might be very large distances of just flat ice. So having the hovercraft being able to traverse the entirety of the ice would be an awesome idea. I'd imagine it'd be small, but probably large enough to keep some supplies with you. In my mind, I, I see it as like the sea moth on land. Anyway, so that is all the information that I seem to be able to gather from all the corners of the internet about the Arctic biome and the expansion or the DLC for Subnautica. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. If there's anything that I missed, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below. We would love to discuss and get some new information. But if you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit that like button. Let me know in the comment section below also what you would like to see in the next video. If you're missing out on the current playthrough, that link will be down in the description so you can continue there. I'll likely be posting another episode tomorrow, so enjoy that. Thanks again for watching, everyone. I love you all, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye!